So I wanted to talk about loopers a little bit and some things that you can do uh, with them, some things that, that a lot of people I think would like to do with them. Most importantly, be able to skip overdubbing uh, immediately after record. So what I have here is a looper patch. It's a stereo looper patch. We have our ins and outs, our audio coming in from this page. <sighs> and it goes into the loopers and I'll show you the options that are on them. 16 second loop. Uh, the ones we're really going to pay attention to are overdub, yes. We want to stop play button. We're going to go through a couple of things that you can do to make the looper more performance ready. So, so again, the big one is to, to bypass overdub. Um, and there's a hack for that. It's not the most obvious thing, but it's not extraordinarily difficult. So what we have here is our stomp switch. I'm using a stomp switch. You can use MIDI, you can use uh, a push button. Uh, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm using a stomp switch and it goes to the record buttons like you would normally set that up. But it also goes into an invert, a CV invert. And the reason that I'm doing this is so that when the stomp switch is released, I'll create a rising CV value. Uh, the stomp switch goes from zero to one. <clears throat> this will drop down to negative one when that's going on. But then when the stomp switch is released, this will go from negative one to zero, which our sequencer will read as a gate. What we have here is a two-step sequencer. Step one is set to zero CV, CV. Step two is set to full CV, but it could be set to anything that isn't zero CV, and I'll get to that in a second. It's a one-shot sequencer. This is important. Not a looping sequencer. I'll come back to that in a second. So we record, our CV gets inverted, and after we finish recording, it goes and, and triggers this sequencer uh, gate. The output of the sequencer <laughs> is sent to a trigger. And the trigger is connected to the, to the playback button. And basically what happens is that as soon as you finish recording, this cycles from zero Z CV to to one CV, it, it creates a rising value, which triggers the trigger. Sorry, I don't have a better verb for that. And that sends a signal to the playback. So instead of overdubbing, it'll override that and go straight uh, to, the, to the playback. Um, okay. And the, the other reason that this is a, a this is a one-shot sequencer, and that's important because you could do this as a looping sequencer. The problem with that is that uh, as soon as as you <coughs> go into overdub, which this will still do, well, whenever we press this button again, it'll go into overdub. It will restart playback wherever you finish overdubbing. Most people, I don't think, overdub right to the end of the bar, so it would create glitches and, and errors in your overdubbing. Um, so anyhow, the way it works is... Right, I forgot I had a loop in here. I'll come to that in a second. We're going to talk about resetting the, the, the loop. I'm using Volca FM with a little pad sound just to, right, jumps right into playback, and I can overdub. Um, so if we're going to, to have all of this, we might as well have a way to reset our sequence like I just did. I'm using my middle stomp switch for that. And 
the CV for that goes uh, from the stomp switch into another CV invert. The idea is once again, we're generating a rising value when we release something. Um, it also goes into the, the reset buttons. And it also goes into the restart jack uh, of, of the Q start input of the, the sequencer. So we're using a, another CV invert. It's going into another trigger. And uh, the trigger goes into a delay, a CV delay, which I've set to about 36 milliseconds. The reason for that is that when you initially trigger the restart of a, a sequence, it requires another gate signal in order for it to, to begin cycling again, um, which is maybe a bug, certainly confusing, not ideal. So basically this goes to the reset. The reset works perfectly. You press it, it resets the, the loop, clears everything out, but this is sort of complicated. So it's going to the restart jack, the, the Q start jack, which sort of primes the, the Q start jack. It's also creating a trigger, which goes to the gate uh, of the sequencer once, and then it gets delayed and goes twice. I can't fully explain why all of this is necessary. Um, the looper functions peculiarly, the sequencer particularly with restarting, I've always found to function peculiarly, but it needs both of these triggers. I tried removing one, this one, because I thought maybe all it needs is a delay. I don't know. But <clears throat> essentially what what's going on is this button will restart the sequence and clear our loop. So and we can start recording a new loop. Okay. And by now you've noticed me using this uh, third stomp switch. And the third stomp switch, what it's doing is one of the other things that people kind of complain about is that the, the stop and start buttons don't stop the, the loop and reset it to its start position. They pause it essentially. So you'll stop it and it'll begin right where it was stopped. Um, so this is another hack for, for that sort of functionality uh, <sighs> that I worked out with Rob Flax. Um, and, and actually, I can't get it to work quite right, so Rob may be able to fill in something that, that I'm forgetting. Um, but So we have another stomp switch. The stomp switch... <clears throat> goes into uh, a trigger. The trigger goes into a, an out switch. This is all gonna get a little bit complicated because most of why I'm doing this is because this is how it works and I don't have a great explanation for that. Um, so you need a trigger because we're going to use this stomp switch to do a few things. It's, it's also connected uh, to um, the CV invert, just like we've been doing throughout this patch. We're, we're creating rising CV uh, after a stomp switch is no longer being pressed. It's going into a trigger and the trigger is cycling through another sequencer like our first one. Although unlike our first one, this one loops and it goes into this switch. The switch is going to basically send uh, CV to two different places. 
the first time it's pressed, it's going to go to the stop button, which will stop our patch. And the second time it's pressed, it'll go to the playback button, which will play back the patch or the loop from the beginning. So We need a trigger here because if we just use uh, the stomp switch output connected directly here, what happens is that, that sometimes the switch will cycle too quickly um, going through this, this invert trigger thing. The sequencer will be triggered too quickly and you'll get lingering values at, at the wrong place. So the trigger, what that does is it just turns whenever we press this it immediately responds. It doesn't matter how long we, we press it, the first time it receives CV, it triggers, if you can see the little light going on there. It doesn't work perfectly and I can't quite figure out why. Mostly it works fine. Again, Rob may have some ideas about that. So these are some pretty simple ways that you can make the looper a little bit more performance friendly. You can make it so it bypasses overdub. You can make it so you can reset it to, to record a new loop. And you can have it stop and then begin playback from the beginning of the loop rather than wherever it, it gets stopped. Um, I also put in some additional functionality just because I was having fun. And <laughs> I forgot something when I did that. But if you press this button, here on the front page, or on the looper page, it changes the functionality of these two stomp switches. Um, so it goes to a switch, and the switch changes the routing from the stomp switch. This is before the this is where the stomp switch goes before it meets anything else. Uh, it gets rerouted from here. So <clears throat> the middle stomp switch comes in here and normally it goes back and it does all of that stuff for the reset and the restart. Uh, the right stomp switch comes in here and it goes back and does all of that stuff for, for playback. Um, but when you press the button, they have different functionality. So let me get the loop playing again. the first button will send everything into reverse and pitch down an octave. The way that it does that is the, the first thing that happens is the stomp switch gets routed to the reverse buttons and also goes through a CV invert where it's connected at 10%. 10% is equivalent to one octave so it's negative one octave and that goes into the speed pitch uh, parameter it's momentary then the other button pitches everything up an octave and that's just a simple, again, it's connected to the speed pitch parameter at 10%. So those are just some ideas of things that you can do with the looper to add functionality. So for instance, you could get a loop that you really liked after going through maybe a couple of resets and and starting and stopping it. And, and then if you wanted to go into sort of a performance thing, you could have these additional options. Uh, you know, a, a push button away. 
there are some complicated ways that you could add all of this functionality to the stomp switches. Um, that's really a, a tutorial for another day where we talk about different ways to utilize the stomp switches. Um, this is probably already too much to begin with. Uh, but, but for those of you who want to know how to overdub without, uh, you know, immediately going into overdub after recording, you know, the first part of this video I hope is really helpful, then there's other stuff. Um, and I'm sorry that I don't have explanations for everything. The looper is sort of everyone's nemesis. It functions very peculiarly. One thing I'll say is that if you're patching something up with the looper and you think it should be working, but it's not, um, save the patch, reload it. Because sometimes it's about different CV settings uh, at the at the time. Um, and so reloading it sort of resets everything. So I know when I was putting this patch together, uh, there were a bunch of times where I said, this should be working and it's not. And I saved it uh, and reloaded it and it was working. The problem was that, that I had pressed something in the wrong way. Um, yeah, so, you know, particularly when you're connecting things to the buttons, the buttons, when you press them, they change states. Not an ideal circumstance, in my opinion, uh, but but a way to, to maybe respond to that is to save the patch, reload it, and see if it's working then. Okay.